So my name is Renee Valiquet. I teach in three different areas at Nipissing. So I teach, at, um, I teach in child and family studies, uh, gender equality and social justice, and um, interdisciplinary studies. How I got into university really is that at the end of high school, I did not want to go to university. So if any of you are feeling hesitant, I was one of those people. I wanted the world to be my teacher. I wanted to travel, I wanted to see the world. And I did, I traveled a little bit, and then I came back home to my parents' house, as you do, uh, and my mother was actually completing a degree at Nipissing over the course of 18 years, and she dragged me to her class. I slept through most of it, but enough of it got in that I was, it piqued my interest, and I was curious, and I thought, maybe, maybe I would like this. So the first two courses I took were an introduction to women's studies and an introduction to philosophy. And I can say to you that from that moment, I was hooked. Both of those classes changed my life. They were the best experience I had ever had because I would go into those rooms and the world would look different when I came out. It was transformative. Uh, and I just have never tired of that feeling. So I decided that I would get a university degree. I came to Nipissing. I double majored in women's studies and philosophy. I went on and did my master's in philosophy and my PhD in something called social and political thought at York University in Toronto. It didn't quite happen that consistently or that smoothly though, which you can see is a trend for me. So after my master's, I wanted to travel again. I got itchy feet again and I wanted to travel again. So I moved to France and became a shepherd. If you take a class with me, I'll tell you more about that. And, uh, and, while I, and so I was there for a while, and then again, once again, I came home and uh, moved back in with my parents, as it didn't work out with the, um, with the shepherd more than the sheep. Um, and then I, uh, I had professors at Nipissing that I had met, and I had formed these wonderful relationships with them, which is part of what is just absolutely brilliant about Nipissing. And they said to me, why don't you teach a class? So I had started my master's, I had started my PhD, I had finished my master's and started my PhD, and they said, why don't you teach a class? And I said, sure. What has driven my interest in becoming a professor is finding any way I can to be in the classroom, because I love classrooms. I love the potential of the classroom. So if you come to Nipissing and you study child and family studies, the easiest way for me to explain what you'll be studying is children and families. That's obvious. But what that means, really, is that some programs are more focused in one subject area. So if you, you, know, if you already know you're interested in psychology or an area of psychology, then maybe you do a psychology degree and you focus in that. What attracts people to child and family studies is our interdisciplinarity. Now that is a word that I like to say people are bored with by the time you get to the end of it, but it actually is something really exciting, which is that you get to have as your focus working with children, caring about children, wanting to make the lives of children and families better, and then you get to choose and, you know, all of the subjects. And you can focus in some areas more than others, but basically you get to draw on you know, subjects from uh, cultural studies, English, I teach media, you know, media classes where you're watching you know, sort of like kid media, you get to draw on um, you know, sort of neurodevelopmental theories and psychology, maybe you draw on children's rights coming from political science and sociology, Basically, no subject is off limits for us. What we're interested in, in is integrating all of the different subjects so that we can best help support um, and enhance the lives of children and families. So the first year level courses, if you're going to do a degree in child and family studies, uh, is introduction to sociology and introduction to psychology. But the one I really want to talk to you about is the introduction to child and family studies, and that's what I teach. And the way that I've designed that class is to really try to give students a feeling for what is exciting about being in a program that draws on so many different disciplines and integrates them together. And really, honestly, in first year, I just want you to get excited about being in university and excited about ideas. So I have organized the Introduction to Child and Family Studies as a sort of lifespan where we start out as babies together 
We learn about how babies are in fact geniuses, right? People used to think that they were just like a, you know, pooping and crying blob. And now we understand that actually babies arrive with all kinds of intelligences. So we're babies. Then we become young children and we talk about, you know, should we be allowed to say ride the subway on our own? And we look at cases where parents have allowed their children to ride the subway at say eight years old or nine years old and other people thought that that was outrageous and scandalous. So we talk about some of the debates around like, what can children do when? What does a safe and a good childhood look like? Screens or no screens? Oh my goodness, right? And um, uh, that's one of my favorite questions that I ask because I think that it's about what we, sc what we watch and how we watch it and not just like an hour of screen time or not. Then we will get married together and we talk about what does it mean to date and get married, you know, because that's the foundation often of a family. Um, what kind of families are we creating these days, right? They're very different than what families looked like 100 years ago, 150, even 50 years ago. Our families look very different. What is the family of the 21st century? What should the family of the 21st century look like? So really my goal is that we have fun, right? School, I think, can be fun, right? You're at university now, you get to choose what you really are going to love to think about for the rest of your life. And so I, that's my goal in the introductory class, to give you the opportunity to explore what is really exciting about, the, about this area. So I think the best part of the Child and Family Studies program is that we have really designed the program so that you get to integrate um, thinking about big ideas, learning about big ideas, we call that the theory, the theory part of it, with doing research, right? Writing papers, doing research, having research projects, and being able to work hands-on in communities, with families, with children, in schools, in other organizations that are helping to support children and families. So you get to integrate all of those in child and family studies. It's not just applied or theoretical, it's all of them. And I think that's something actually really unique about our program. Of course, the interdisciplinary aspect of the program, we offer a ton of opportunities for you to be in placement meaning that you get to learn about the ideas and most of our placements take place within a course. So you'll take a course and they're called practicum courses and that course will allow you to go out. We partner with all kinds of community members who care about children and families. You get to go and learn from them, work with them in community, and then come back to the classroom and talk about it with a professor so we don't just kind of send you out on your own. We, we support you in that effort. Um, and so you get to, you know, have a real world of experience of what it means to work with children and families. You also get to then apply the things that you're learning in the classroom and see how people are using those theories in the real world, right? So if you're interested in working with children with neurodevelopmental differences, children who are, you know, sort of autism spectrum disorders, um, you know, sort of all kinds of, you know, sort of diversity of needs with children and, and all kinds of tools that we've developed to try and support them, you get to actually be in the real world, as we like to say, I like to say that, that university is also real world, but you get to be in the real world applying these theories and seeing how they function and how people in the jobs that you might one day have uh, are using those theories and applying them. In terms of what kinds of jobs, that you might get with a child and family studies degree, I would say there are lots of options, right? It's an interdisciplinary degree, so one of the strengths is that you can actually use it in a variety of different areas. So um, a lot of students do continue on to education. A lot of our students are interested in education, and so it makes sense to get a degree in child and family studies. But a lot of our students are also interested in uh, working basically anywhere in your community where people are working with children and families and are interested in supporting children and families, there are job opportunities there. So you can think of what those are, right? There are, you know, whether it's daycare centers, whether it's the YMCA, whether it's summer camp, whether or not it's, you know, being the person who's helping to put together uh, a sort of a personal plan for support for children, uh, working in, you know, 
in, in tandem with social workers, um, helping to evaluate programs within organizations. There are government jobs where you're working with children, youth, and families. There are non-government organizations, all kinds of them that work um, and to support children and families and lots of jobs within those, um, within those programs um, that you might fit into. Program evaluation. Uh, is another one where you're going to go in and assess and see how well is this program servicing the needs of the children and the families um, that it is supposed to support and you do the evaluation to see how well it's doing and to give advice on how to improve it. But in a nutshell, uh, anywhere where people are working with or working to support children and families, you will find job opportunities with this degree. I think my favorite class to teach is a third year class called Youth and Social Justice. It probably should be called Youth, Social and Environmental Justice, but that's, you know, it's getting wordy. So, so I love teaching young people how to imagine uh, a future for ourselves. And that's my sort of primary passion in my own research is um, environmental justice. So I think now people would say you can't really separate social and environmental um, when you're talking about issues of justice. So yeah, I think we need to help, we, you know, those of us that are willing to admit that we didn't do a good enough job maybe uh, keeping the world healthy for the next generation, we now have to do a better job of helping you all figure out how to navigate uncertain futures and how to not just feel awful and terrible terrible about all of it and I want the students who take that class to be able to pass those lessons along to the children and the families that they work with to help them be able to do the same thing. My favorite, okay this is going to be a cheesy answer in terms of where is my favorite spot on campus but I'm going to say A224 which none of you know what that is. It is a classroom. It is my favorite classroom and the, the reason I love it, though, is because it is the room that facilitates this interaction, the discussion. It's a media room, but it's cozy. I don't know how else to describe it, but it's cozy. It feels comfortable. It feels engaging. We're in circles. Everybody has a comfortable seat. You're at a table. I know that's, you know that might sound ridiculous, but I actually think that you know, feeling comfortable is important for learning. You need to feel comfortable with me, you need to feel free to speak, to think broadly and creatively and critically, um, and I love classrooms. My favorite place in North Bay is a bread store called The Culture Club. This is one of the things I love about living in a small town. I am from North Bay, so I know it like the back of my hand, but I lived in Toronto for many, many years. I, I love big cities as well. But the thing about a small city is that you find these treasures, you find these people, right? In the big city, it's like there's cool stuff everywhere. And uh, in North Bay, you have to sort of find them and seek them out. And then you build these relationships with these people. So the Culture Club is run by this woman, Leslie Morrison. She's the best maker of bread in the world. She started making bread out of her house, out of her oven, and I have supported her since, she, since I was picking up the bread from her driveway. And then she started a store, she created a store, she, it's growing, it's expanding. I feel like I got to be a part of like helping her succeed and I get to eat a ton of bread.